updates. Welcome to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates, your source for current affairs in Tobago, Trinidad, and the region. With the perfect conversations to complement your morning routine, I am Candace Jackson, and let's get started with the news in 90 seconds. Environmentalist Derek Hearn lamented the loss of business due to the construction of a connector road from Sherman Junction to Storby Local Road. On Friday, the Environmental Management Agency successfully convinced the court to grant an injunction to stop the road construction because the THA did not have the necessary environmental clearances. However, Mr. Hearn, for Mr. Hearn, it was a little too late. Hearn owns a 50-acre estate in friendship with horses and an organic farm. He said construction affected his horses and created a dangerous environment for horse riding. He was forced to turn away clients interested in riding his horses. Meanwhile, the Tobago West MP Champa Kajo raised concerns about the Pali Augustine-led administration managing public funds prudently. It came after the circulation of an audio clip in which voices resembling that of senior officials were heard discussing employing individuals spreading propaganda on social media. Could you express fears that the THA's budget would be squandered through corruption? She questioned how the THA planned to spend the additional $100 million provided by the media review. She demanded that Augustine be accountable and transparent. And finally, the United National Congress intensified its cry for the local government elections to be called. The parliament sits today to validate the positions of councillors and aldermen between December 2022 and May 2023. The sitting was required after the Privy Council ruled that it was illegal to extend the term for a year and postpone elections. At a press conference yesterday, opposition MP Kadisha Amin accused the Prime Minister of being unpatriotic by failing to announce the election date. On Wednesday, Dr. Rowley said a writ would be issued after today's parliament sitting for an election date to be fixed within 90 days. And that was the news in 90 seconds. Well, viewers, we are, you know, turning to some conversations in regards to the politics. It's been heating up in Tobago for the last few weeks. So we have on with us a political scientist from uh, UWE, and that is Dr. Bishu Raghunath. Good morning and welcome to you, sir. How are you doing? Okay, I think your mic might be off. Yes. Good morning. Uh, there we go. Good morning. <laughs> yes. Pleasure to be here. Great. Now, I mean, by now you would have heard about the voice note. And, of course, we have not gotten the confirmation as to whether or not we haven't had that video that that voice note verified. However, there are some, I mean, serious, uh, serious things being said in that voice note in regards to Provide an employment for those persons that um, are, be, are willing to spread propaganda on behalf of the administration. Now, what are your opinions on that, Dr. Ragunath? Well, basically, it is wrong. Uh, to put long and short of it, it's wrong. Uh, it is an, an abuse of office, political office. It's corruption in a way. So, in effect, if that is the the position that was adopted by people in the assembly, then there should be actions to deal with and punitive measures to be impl implied on those persons. That is, is all a, I would Is this a matter for the Integrity Commission to engage in investigation? Definitely it is a matter for the Integrity Commission as well as the Anti-Corruption Bureau to uh, determine whether or not, well, first of all, um, Somebody has to verify the, the voice note, whether it is true or not, and whether it is, yeah, we are into this age where fake items are always circulated on, on um, social media. So we don't know. Once it could be verified, well, then it is, becomes a matter now for the police, uh, because this is abuse of office, as well as for the Integrity Commission. So those are the institutions that will have to be called into action once we can verify that those voice notes are true. And then what about the consequences? You know, if found guilty, what what kind of consequences are we looking at? Is it prison time, fines? Well, again, that would depend upon what charges are being laid. We don't know what charges are being laid, if at all any. So that's the context in which we have now to, to wait until we go forward. And first of all, so there are various steps to be taken. One, 
you have to verify the voice notes. I mean, we, we have had no, as far as I'm aware, uh, there's no admission that these uh, voice notes belong to the people who are being accused of being of being participants in that voice note. So um, there's no admission. So the question now is, how do we move to that second stage where we now verify that it is them, uh, where's the information coming from, who's going to do it, all of these things need to be answered before we move forward. Only when we have clear, a clear indication that this is a verified voice note coming from the individuals who are being named, well, then we could then call back, call into the police and so forth. But, well, to, to deal with that abuse of office. But for the uh, present, we need now to deal with the whole issue of verifying the voice notes and taking it forward. Now, Dr. Raghunath, this this uh, faux pas is the latest in a series of faux pas um, that happened that that was committed by the administration. What are your opinions so far? We're just almost, I mean, a year and a half um, into the administration, and um, there's just there's been quite a few mistakes being made. So, what what, are you, what is your opinion on you know the level of governance that this team has been able to provide for Tobago? All right, so. I, I would speak generally on the level of governance, not necessarily about this last issue, because as I said, we have not verified that this is an uh, issue related to the members of the THA. But for all intents and purposes, let's talk about the level of governance. The level of governance is something that has always been a challenge for us in Trinidad and Tobago. And what we are seeing here is simply the continuation that there is that challenge where there's lack of transparency, lack of accountability, um, and integrity in how we do things. Ethics and integrity are, are missing. And that is one of the concerns that we will have as we move forward um, in trying to resolve several of these challenges. Because for all intents and purposes, when you look at where we are in governance, it, it, it's it's Sure, falling short of what we need to be at. Mm -hmm. And in that context, clearly those who are seeking political office should at least have better ideals and go forward. Now, I sit here as chairman of the Council for Responsible Political Behavior. Before the last elections in Tobago, I was there getting several members of the various political parties to sign on to the court. Now, the code does not exist, uh, well, shall, maybe I should say the code does not exist, but rather the, the monitoring of the code as, at this point in time does not exist in Tobago because we are out of the election period. Mm -hmm. But the principles enunciated in that code are the principles which clearly the members of the THA should attempt to follow because they signed on to it. Mr. Augustine was the one who signed on at the, prior to the election. And we would hope that he and his party would do so. We also know that, for instance, even before the, the last election, he talked about a social contract. And these are all elements by which we should now try to get the political parties that are in office, and even those who are seeking office, to us strive to and to follow and to vigorously defend. And that is something that we as a citizenry must now demand of our leaders, that they abide by certain codes of conduct, they abide by certain levels of ethics and integrity, accountability and transparency. We have to demand that of them. And when we, they are falling short, then they have a political price to be paid. And we have to make sure that they pay that political price. Now there is a, a challenge from that, from you know, from from the administration that said that they are faced with a lot of persons within the public service that that hold to um, the previous political, the whole allegiances to the previous political administration, and uh, you know that has challenge them in the way that they have been able, they've been able to perform. What do you say to that argument? Is that, um, is that fair? Can they, uh, can, can they use that as an excuse for some of 
the reasons why they have not been able to do what they promised to do? Well, that, that is always an issue regardless of uh, whichever government you talk about, whichever administration you talk about. Once a new administration comes into office, they have to deal with uh, persons from previous administrations uh, or supporters of the, the previous administration trying to undermine their plans and proposals as they move forward. But the point about it is that, yes, they have... That is something that is par for the course. You have to understand that you're going to expect that. It is just like uh, reform in the, in the public sector. You have to expect resistance. So resistance is one thing that you cannot deny. Having said that, however, you must be able to find mechanisms and, and vehicles by which you could move around those resistance. Now, do, and you must do so, and this is the, the key point, do so within the context of the law, not outside the law, as we may have suggested, it may be suggested that they were attempting to do based if these voice notes are proven to be true. So they must work within the law. And yes, there is that concern. Um, in many instances, for instance, we have seen where various uh, contract employees are being employed um, to make sure that they don't undermine the work of the administration. That may be something that the, the THAS uh, administration may want to consider. I don't know whether they want to set up special purposes, companies and so forth. All of these things to make sure that they get their program on the way. But yes, it is a legitimate concern, but it is not an excuse for non-delivery. And finally, Dr. Raghunod, just as we're wrapping up, um, is there any chance for recovery from the situation that uh, the Fale Augustine led administration finds themselves in? Well, bear in mind that the administration is just a year and a, a bit uh, in office, a year and a half. Um, that means they have two and a half more years before the next election. Uh, when, when, for instance, they all resigned as part of the PDP and came into the came into office as a part of the the whole process of um, independence, uh, there was also that concern: should they go out of office now and and all of those things. Now, our concern here is simply one which says they could very well sit in the office for the next two and a half years and try to do all that they can to redeem themselves. Whether they will succeed or, um, in the eyes of the, the electorate, they are, that we'll have to really wait and see. But again, it is for them now to perform and perform to the best of their ability so that the, they could have some degree of uh, support from the population, notwithstanding all the various faux pas and mistakes and missteps that they may have taken in the last year and a half. All right, I want to thank you so much uh, Dr. Raghunath, for sharing your views and um, your, your your critical analysis on, on this situation here that's unfolding in Tobago. It's been my pleasure. All right, well, viewers, well, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, more conversations.